going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. On time as well, people. On time, 2 p.m. Big up to everyone on this Monday. Hope you're well and uh, happy start to the new week. And I tell you what, it is a big, big week for Arsenal, man. As uh, I know we're in the middle of the international break at the moment and it doesn't really feel like... Um, Club football is is there, but um, you know by this weekend things will feel very different, man. That Arsenal Man City game uh, this weekend is absolutely huge. So obviously start of the week will build up to that. Big up to everyone locked in. I hope you're well. And um, big up to everyone who tuned in for the England v Brazil watch along, man. That was a that was a a learning. Um, watch along and I think that the lesson to learn from that was don't do any watch alongs for England games unless it's in a major tournament because boy they are boring to watch and uh, somebody messaged me he goes oh you're an England fan so why did you celebrate uh, the Brazil goal so much I said bro uh, listen I don't know about you but Jogger Benito raised all of us bro you know what I'm saying Hendrick 17 years of age the new star boy of Brazil, I was more hyped about that than watching Conor Gallagher kick the ball out for a throw-in and Ben Chilwell uh, look like he's had 10 pints of beer the night before. It's very hard to get hyped about England, I'm afraid, you know, it's Southgate tax. So yeah, it is what it is. On time again, oh my days, hey, Trossard settings, I can't see, you know, all them people that was coming for me, but hey, it is what it is, I've been late enough, so... Uh, Salmon said, uh, I would bold day and Jordi Alba over Cancelo. He looked way better in the Prem. Arsenal should probably be looking elsewhere. I know you know a lot about Barcelona, so I'll get your thoughts on this, bro. Um, England can't be serious with Maguire. I mean, you've got Lewis Dunk, who plays good football. You've got Tomori, who's won Syria. You've got, um, Joe Gomez, who's won everything at Liverpool. And you've got, um... Who else have you got? I mean, you've got Bramthwaite, who's highly rated, although I don't know about him yet. But you've got multiple options that are better than Maguire. But hey, Harry Maguire. Uh, big up Adria, who said, yo, Big C. Big up Jamaican living in Tampa Bay, Florida. Big up yourself, bro. Uh, Trevor said, I fell asleep. Thank God for your stream. That's what England will do to you, bro. Um, Gallagher is a Henderson regen, I hear you. He's that player you're all going to look at and go, why is this guy in the England squad? Uh, Southgate loves his favourites. Listen, one thing we can all agree on with Southgate, he has improved what is happening in the England setup, right? He took over from Big Sam, who'd been sacked for taking money, and Roy Hodgson was shocking. And he's improved them. He got them to a final and the semi final, and the spirit's good. Cool, I respect that. But equally, you should have beat Croatia in the semi-final. You was one nil up and in control. You messed it up. You should have beaten an aging Italian team at Wembley in front of all England fans. One nil up in five minutes. And you bottled it with your tactics. So, yeah, it's all about winning. It's all about winning. And I'm not comparing the two. But long term, the same questions are going to be asked of Mikel Arteta. Yes, you've improved Arsenal massively. Yes, you've got us competing again. We have a style of football and a philosophy... The next hurdle is, can you get us over the finish line? And listen, he has won as an FA Cup, but those big trophies are what we're looking at now. So big up to everyone locked in anyway. And uh, let's get into today's show. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already as well. We're 150 away from 75k. So if you haven't subscribed, lick down that button, people. Um, let's start off. Happy Monday, first of all, every uh, everybody locked in. Uh, what should we start with? Let's start with uh, Ashley Cole, who's like a swear word in the Arsenal fan base. Uh, not for me. I, I was never... Listen, I always look at football like this. If a big player leaves your club and goes somewhere else and you're a big club, then either your club isn't doing something right or the club he's going to are doing something better than you. Now, at the time, everybody went, Cashley Cole, Cashley Cole, he left because of money. But the guy went to Chelsea and won everything. So, for me, I mean, I'm with you, Nico. It was business. And he handled his business. And, I, and my problem with the Arsenal fan base over the years was, at times, not everybody, every time a big player left and went elsewhere, they said, he's a snake, he's a snake, he's a snake. But then I went, hold on, 
maybe something's wrong at Arsenal. And this is why these guys keep leaving. And then you've got David Dean comes out and says they verbally agreed a contract with him. Then the board changed their mind and offered him less. So some people would say, well, you know what? The guy is Arsenal through and through, came through the youth team. He should have just took the contract. But if your boss t says to you today, I'm going to give you a pay rise this much money and then they give you the contract and the pay rise isn't there, you're going to be like, what? Am I really appreciated it? Uh, listen, I understand why people were fuming. The guy went to Chelsea, they were on the up, there was a London rival. But we faded over that period of time. But anyway, it is what it is. At least we're better than them now. They're on page two, except the cookies in the Premier League. Ashley Cole's been inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame. Um, congratulations to him. The way I look at it, He's the best left back to ever play in the Premier League. It's as simple as that. I don't think it's even close, to be honest. Um, I mean, look, Franklin said you like all the players that snake us. I find it kind of weird. Because do you know why, Franklin? Snaking us, in my opinion, was Alexis Sanchez. You went to a very average Man United team for money that had no philosophy and no style and you struggled and it fell apart. If you want to talk about that, I understand that. Ashley Cole left a, an Arsenal team that was beginning to fade and went to a Chelsea team that was on the up and he won everything. The proof was in the pudding. So you have to put context into it, frankly. You have to put context into it. Robin Van Persie, they called him a snake. He won the title in the golden boot. We faded, you know, so and they were they didn't they weren't ambitious enough. He shouldn't have gone to United, but he'll say I won the title. And we have to also understand these guys are not fans of the club. Okay, Ashley Cole says he was, but he won everything. So put context in there, Franklin, before you you know put those comments in, my friend. Um in my opinion, Arsenal legend and Chelsea would say he's a Chelsea legend, to be honest. Um, would I call him a, an Arsenal legend? I would. He was in the Invincibles. He was an unbelievable left back for us. Incredible. Um, and obviously won the FA Cup at Arsenal as well. And he goes to Chelsea, wins the Champions League and uh, wins the league as well. So I think both clubs would call him a legend. But yeah, listen, I, I, I get it. I get why people would think... Oh, you're an Arsenal fan, so you should just hate every player that leaves. Now, nah, football ain't like that. Because what you're doing then, sometimes you're letting the club off with their lack of ambition. And that was the bigger problem. You know, the, the owners at the time were hiding behind things like this. Um, but what a player he was. And uh, also, Sol Campbell um, and Cesc Fabregas have been nominated. I think Arsenal have a vote on their website uh, where you can vote for those two guys to get in there as well. Um, and he did speak uh, very vividly about Arsenal. He said, being a boyhood Arsenal fan, I was living out a dream, just putting on the shirt and playing for the first team in front of the fans so close to the Highbury pitch. Uh, it was one of the most beautiful stadiums. Growing up, all I knew was loving Arsenal Football Club. There you go, Ashley Cole people. Uh, although Chris Welton don't agree in the chat. <laughs> I won't read what he said, though. Um, Anonymous said, players that snaked us won a lot. Um, when they went, remember Stan brought Arsenal not to win trophies. Funny how we have not won anything major since these players left. Many of the players have won a lot. Exactly. I think for a long time we allowed the ownership to get away with it because we were more caught up on criticising the player for leaving. We have to look at the reason why they left. Um, let's have a look. It was all... Cashley Cole says Shaq. Anyway, let's move on from, from Cashley Cole. Um, yeah, he's he's in the, the Premier League Hall of Fame. Let's talk transfers. It's Monday. There's transfer rumours galore. And uh, Arsenal are being linked with Nottingham Forest attacking midfielder. Sometimes plays on the wing, but attacking midfielder Morgan Gibbs-White. Um, obviously, I know quite a lot about him. Uh, I've got a few friends who, who work at Forest, and obviously it's my hometown club. Uh, Morgan Gibbs, why? Uh, Nottingham Forest could be prepared to sell their star player due to FFP problems. They need to balance the books this summer. They could obviously be relegated. Um, apparently, they want to get their money back. They paid £42 million for him, and uh, they're looking for around the same. For me, I'm going to say this. I think he's a good player. 
I think he's a good player. I think he has talent. And I think if Forrest stay up or not, he will probably get a move. However, this is this is not the answer for Arsenal. And I do realise not every player that we sign is necessarily a player that goes straight into the first team and, you know, takes us to the next level. You do you are gonna sign players that are young, they're prospects, they may be squad players, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. Um but I don't see why Arsenal would spend over £40 million on Morgan Gibbs-White. It makes no sense to me. Number one, the position that he plays, we've got Odegaard, we've got Smith-Rowe, you've got Fabio Vieira, you can get, and, and Havertz plays there sometimes. Now, I know some of those guys have not been a success, so, you know, he would possibly be better there than some of the players that we've had playing there, i.e., you know, Fabio Vieira hasn't really done anything. But why, why would you pay 40-odd million pound on Morgan Gibbs-White? I, I, I just don't even understand the link, to be honest. Um, if you want an attacking midfielder, buy one that goes straight into the first team that improves us. I, I, just, I don't see any reason for this. Now, I want to put things into perspective. I want to give you some perspective because I can see your comments and I'm clicking them. I'll put them on screen as we talk. Now, when I was thinking about it, and it could just be agent rumours, right? I think he will leave Forrest in the summer. He wants to create hype around him. Agents do that. They link them with, with clubs. But my thought process is this. My thought process is this. Ramsdale could go this summer. Smith Rowe could go. And Ketia could go. Nelson could go. Arsenal are going to need English players. I don't think we'll sell all four of those guys I've just mentioned but I think we will sell two of them at least. I would expect Nketiah and Ramsdale to 100% leave this sum. I think ESR and Nelson, if somebody offered the right price, the club would possibly consider them as well. I, I think we may need to sign one or two English players this summer because obviously you have to have a number of English players in your squad. So, you know, maybe this is just a way of... And the club might look at it and go, Smith Rowe, to me, looks like a player that I think Arteta is giving up on. Whether it's his attitude, his fitness, his level, I don't know. He may look at it and think, I can get 30-odd, maybe 40 million for ESR, and I can get Gibbs White in for the same price. It would basically be a swap deal. Obviously, you'd sell ESR. He's been linked to Newcastle and West Ham. He might look at it and think, well, Gibbs White is better than ESR at this moment in time and they're going to cost about the same money. Gibbs White would also be on a lot less wages. Maybe he thinks the ceiling is higher for a player like that. So, listen, for me, I wouldn't be signing Gibbs White. I, I think I would have took him when we just finished eighth. I would have probably took him when we just finished fifth. Now we're in title race. You know, we're trying to win the league. We're trying to win the title. Listen, I'm with you. I, I think Gibbs White is a good player. If you watch Forrest play any game, you're going to watch Gibbs White and go, probably their best player, to be honest. I just don't know if he's an Arsenal-level signing. I suppose when you're signing a player, sometimes it's not what level he's at, it's what level he can go to. And maybe Arteta looks at him and thinks... He can go to a very high level. I don't know. What do you guys think in the comments? Let's get the first poll of the day. Uh, 40 to 45 million, it says. They paid 42 mil. So let's write it at the top end. Would you pay... Would you buy Gibbs White for 45 million? Um, I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm thinking... I was When I was thinking about this, what English player... Would you go for if you was Arsenal? Um, if you did need to sign an English player this summer, let's say we get rid of Ramsdale, Nelson, and Enketia, and we're short of English players, and we need to sign one or two. Who would you go for? You know, out of the possible English players, would you rather go for Jared Bowen? Would you go for Eze? Uh, that's a good shout there. Mitchell as well. You've got Mitchell at Crystal Palace. Uh, yeah, Jude. Of course, we'd love that. Um, Hey, relax, man. They love me and not Mr. Cool Bus Driver. But no, listen, if we needed to sign English players, who would you go for? I think Eze is a great shout. Uh, Jared Bowen would be expensive. 
Elise, I mean, Elise, I think he is considered homegrown even though he plays for France. I mean, Cole Palmer, you're not getting in. Mark Gay from Palace, that's a good shout. Ivan Tony, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's it. How can I forget that one? Marcus Rashford, hey, keep it quiet. There's only a few Rashford fans left. I'm one of them. Uh, but yeah, the, the community don't like that one. Listen, there aren't many, but what I would say is it wouldn't be Gibbs White for me. You could get Mitchell for less than that. Uh, Elise has a release clause. The problem with Elise, I don't think he would come to Arsenal because everything I've read is he wants guarantees of first team football. Elise is not starting at Arsenal over Saka. So Chelsea and Man United have been linked with him. I think he would start right wing for probably both of them teams. New Music said I'm pro Rashford. Ollie Watkins, yep, he's good. He'd be expensive. <laughs> not Ben Chilwell after the other day, bro. He'd be like, Brennan Johnson at Spurs, not that great. The thing I've always thought with Gibbs White, though, just to give him a bit of credit over Brennan Johnson, is Brennan Johnson's a bit of a pace merchant, bit of a straight lines footballer where he gets it and runs. I think Gibbs White is a bit more intelligent on the ball. Um, but it just, the, the deal would make no sense for me. I, I don't want him personally. Um, I'd be quite disappointed if we... Spent 40-odd million pound on Gibbs White. But let me know what you think, people. We'll uh, we'll leave that there. But I definitely think there could be a situation where we're looking for English players. Tomori's another one as well. I know, as I can see, a lot of you in the comments saying, you know, Gibbs White, don't really want him. Um, but I do think that... Um, I do think there's going to be a situation we need to sign an English player. We'll sign Jamie Vardy. About 10 years too late. Gibbs White is more technical than Johnson, 100%. Um, Mark said, Arteta has scouts out there and not using them. Rather look at lower other clubs for players. That's why he will never be a good manager. Wow, Mark's going in there. Uh, Bramthwaite, a few of... Uh, do you know that Bramthwaite? There's a lot of hype around him. I really don't know how good the guy is, to be honest. I just... I've just seen him get bodied by Haaland. I know Haaland can body most defenders, so maybe that's a bit harsh. Do you know what? That is a... Cardo, that is a very, very interesting one. Um, I've been seeing some stories that Jack Grealish could get sold this summer. And when you look at it, there's only a few clubs in the Premier League that would probably go for him. I personally wouldn't want Jack Grealish. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me. Any good Manchester City player that gets linked with a move. I kind of think Arsenal would be lurking um, for them. I mean, Grealish is 28. That wouldn't surprise me, you know. That really... Listen, at Aston Villa, I wanted him at Arsenal. I just think Pep's kind of turned him into a system player rather than an individual player. At Villa, he was outstanding. I remember him ripping Hector Bellerin apart. Um, although a lot of people have ripped Hector Bellerin apart. But yeah, that would be an interesting one. That would be it. He's on massive wages and he's injury prone at the moment. Uh, as a bench option, he wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I suppose. Listen, maybe, um, maybe I'm being snobbish, people. Uh, like I said, the uh, the standards have gone up. Two years ago, I wanted Tielemans. Now, I'd be absolutely fuming if we signed him. Do you know what I mean? I, I think with the, the levels that we're going to, I want better players. I think Arsenal are in a situation this season where, let's just say, for example, two years ago, we needed a striker. And we signed Gabriel Jesus. And Jesus at the time felt like a good signing. Or we needed a midfielder two years ago. We wanted Tielemans. At that time, two years ago, we could only sign the best that would potentially have come to Arsenal. Sancho, that would be interesting. Now, I think if we want a striker, we should be going for the best striker who is available on the market. If that's Osser men, if that's whoever. If we want an attacking midfielder, I want Arsenal to be going for Musiala or Florian Wurtz. I see a lot of you in the comments saying him. Those players are like potential game changers if you get those guys. I mean, listen, Mbappe, I tried, but it ain't happening. But I, I think the level has to change. I think Arsenal are in a situation now. If you go to a top, top player, you can say London, big stadium, big fan base, challenging for the title. We can pay you the wages. Our style of football is fantastic. We've got a young squad. We've got a manager on the up. There is no excuse not to go for a top, top, top player. Hey, Mr. Cool Bus Driver, relax yourself, bro. 
We don't want that scumbag at Arsenal. But yeah, Nico, the, 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 the level have to go up, brother. You know what I mean? I don't want them little Tielemans and them man there. We're not trying to get Champions League. I want to win the league. So I want to see Musiala and, and Florian Wurtz. I want to see Victor Osimhen. I want to see Diamande. I want real ballers coming through the door. So nah, I don't, I don't want no projects. I, I don't want no projects. Um, to come through the door like Gibbs White. But listen, he is a good player. He would be decent on the bench. But Arsenal are not going to spend so much money, in my opinion, that we can afford to be buying projects. I want us to sign three or four players that are just take us to the next level, you know. Um, anyway, let's move on. I will end that uh, poll on your thoughts on Gibbs White. i got a feeling the majority of you will be saying no anyway. Um 70% of you say no, 30% of you say yes. Uh, Floyd Money said, Drake v. Kendrick, whose side you on? I mean, listen, I think what we have to do with that question, just briefly, you know we're always going to um, go away from football for a moment, whether it's NBA or hip-hop, but you got to remember Kendrick's dissing J. Cole as well, not just Drake. If it's Kendrick against Drake then Drake's in a whole heap of trouble. He needs to fall back, you know? But Drake's powerful in different ways. He's got the corporations and the companies on his side. That's why That's why Meek couldn't deal with Drake. If you want to go bar for bar, Kendrick's going to deal with Drake. But Cole World, J. Cole can rap. So more like J. Cole against Kendrick. Um, Drake's going to have to fall back on this one, in my opinion. But... If J. Cole starts saying stuff, then it, then it, it could get serious. Because that boy can rap. Um, current J. Cole bodies can... A lot of you saying Cole will uh, will deal with it. It's a cold world. Cold world, people. It's a cold world. But Drake... Nah, nah listen. Even... Yeah, Pusher dealt with Drake. But Pusher never had the, the support level. You know? that It's one of them, innit? But yeah, I want to hear J. Cole respond. I can't lie. Uh, but big up, big up. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on, people, and uh, continue with the transfer talk. And uh, let's talk about this man, Zhao Cancelo. Salmon Rosso, if you're in the chat, let me know. But um, an intro, the man said, drop the poll, J. Cole Drake. I might, I might throw one up in a minute. Um, it's an interesting one. Oh, he is in the chat anyway. Jao Cancelo being linked with a move today to Arsenal. Now, I just want to give you the whole of this story. And I know we've been linked with this guy before. When I read these stories out, they're kind of boring because we've been here before and you just feel like it isn't going to happen. But I'm just going to talk about it just in case. I don't think it will happen, but it's not impossible. Now, Jao Cancelo is on loan at Barcelona. Um... And he did an interview saying Barcelona was his dream move. He's played 24 league games this season, two goals for assists, eight Champions League games, getting a lot of football. And Barcelona apparently unable to pay the 40 million release clause that it would take to make the deal permanent. Although, although he said some pretty damning things today about Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, which makes me think that there's no way on earth Man City will bring him back. And I think the reason he said this so publicly is he probably wants it so that Man City don't consider bringing him back. And what he's probably hoping is that they will negotiate the contract lower to enable him to go to Barcelona. Where Arsenal come into this deal, uh, apparently the rumours, uh, people online are saying the Cancelo rumour is not even true, but the, they're saying that Arsenal basically would be prepared to pay the uh, the 40 million. And uh, apparently Arteta is a massive, massive um, fan of him and would potentially like to bring him in to play at left back. Now, I've got to admit, listen, the reason I think he's done this interview is because a lot of people question his attitude at Manchester City. Cancelo put out a quote. There were fake stories about him at City. He said he's never been a bad teammate. He got robbed in his home. The next day they were playing, funnily enough, against Arsenal. He said, there are things you don't forget. I left my wife and daughter alone at home in shock to play for City. 
And at City, they were ungrateful to talk about me like this. I've been an important player for them. So he's publicly, you know, dissing Man City. Um, if they want 40 million for him, basically Barcelona are not in a position to pay it, which could enable Arsenal to swoop and pay the 40 million and get him. And apparently Arteta was a big fan of him from his time at City. So let's get a second poll of the day. Would you pay 40 million for Cancelo? Would you pay 40 mil for Cancelo? I'm a little bit, on one hand, I'm like, listen, he's a better left back than Zinchenko and he's elite on the ball as well. Remember, this guy got in team of the season at Man City. So I'm I'm not going to get too caught up in the, oh, we fell out with Pep. Pep fell out with Yaya Torre. Pep fell out with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Pep has fallen out with a number of players. Falling out with Pep is not a barometer for whether I would take a player or not. 29 concerns me, and I'm not talking about Kai Havertz uh, to when I say 29 concerns me. Um, he's 30 in May. So I'm I'm kind of like, do you want to sign a left back that is going to be 30 by the summer for 40 million pounds? And he's on nearly 200 grand a week. And I know, you know, I don't like getting caught up in age too much. If you're talking about purely the player, I think he's a very good player. My sort of thing would be, I think that Timber can go in at left back, can do the job for us rather than spending 40 million on a Cancelo that's nearly 30. So whilst Cancelo the player, I think he is a, still a very good player. And I, I don't want I don't want people to think, how can I sit here and turn down Cancelo? Cancelo is a fantastic fullback, by the way. And I still think you get a couple years out of him as a top, top player. Um, and he can invert as well. But I wonder if we can just get Timber to do that same thing rather than spending 40 million on him. I suppose the problem you've got, Timber's coming back from an ACL injury. How much is that injury going to affect him? Is he going to be the same player when he comes back? So I'm a little bit, for me, I'm not sure I'd be spending 40 million on him. He is a fantastic football player. That's the thing. He is a brilliant football player. And I like um, UK said, he said, um, you know, we do need some experience in the team and you do need winners. My problem is with Arsenal, when we're spending money, we can't waste it, you know, and I think we need a striker more than a left back. I think we need one or two centre mids more than a left back. I think we need a right winger. I, I, I think left back with Timber, with Tomiyasu, we don't know what happens with Zinchenko and Tierney. You know, I, he is a very good player. He is a very good player. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Moj has just said Cancelo, Saliba, Gabriel and Timber, even though that's quite harsh on... Ben White, um, that back four looks great on paper. I can't lie. <laughs> like uh, Looking at the full potential of that back four, I would be hyped. But yeah, man. Uh, listen, there's a lot of players that I would like us to get this summer. And, uh, you know, another thing with FFP is it's the wages as well. Wages comes into it. Listen, if we got him, I'd hype him. But Sama says, 40 million, do not spend it. Do a loan only. Arsenal want him. He's lost his pace and not as accurate as he should be. He's all fantastic touch now. And and that's what I'm saying. And Salman, obviously, I think he lives in Barcelona, so he knows a lot about Barcelona. And the fact he's saying he's lost his pace, you know, that, that's a concern to me. Um, so, yeah, listen. Agent Wage. Agent Wage, as somebody just said in the comments. Listen, realistic summer. Somebody just said there, what's your realistic summer? Jay Dime. Jay Dime, for me, the realistic summer of Arsenal, you buy a striker. That striker, in my opinion, should be Osamen, Jokerez, Ivan Tony. One of those three. Um, there's other good options. I don't think Vlajevic will leave. Oli Watkins would cost probably 90 to 100 million, and I'm not sure he's the answer anyway. Uh, Sesco, I'm not convinced. Santiago Jimenez, I haven't watched enough. So to me, you get Osimen, Jokerez, Ivan Tony. 
all gettable. Isak, I like. The injuries worry me. So th that's the first one. For me, you get a centre mid at least one. Then you've got Rice. You get rid of El Nenny. Jorginho, they'll give him an, a year extension. Whether I agree with that or not, they will keep him. Part A, it's interesting what happens with him. If you've got Rice, a new centre mid, Part A and Jorginho, that's your four. If Part A or Jorginho go, you need two midfielders, right? I think you need a physical one and you need one that can get on the ball and play. I'd love to get Fafana from Monaco. I'd love to get Barella, but maybe he doesn't leave Inter. They're probably going to win the league. So you need one or two centre mids. Striker, you need another right winger. Oh, I'd love to get Frankie de Jong. You need another right winger. So whether that's Elise, Neto, Sane, I don't know. They're all going to be hard to convince because of Saka. And then I think we need another defender. You need another defender just to give us a bit more, you know, strength in depth there. And you're going to need a second choice goalkeeper. Second choice goalkeeper will cost you peanuts, right? Uh, a defender, maybe 40, 50 million. Centre mid, maybe 60, 70 million. So let's say you've spent 110, 10, 15 on the keeper, 120. Spend about 70 million on the striker. That's 190. Spend about 40 million on the right winger. That's 240 million. We spent 230 million this summer. So that's a realistic window. That's a realistic window in terms of how much we're going to spend. Uh, Jaden Sancho, uh, I think he'll end up at Dortmund. Jokeres, Douglas Luiz, Elise, and Gay. I mean, they're, they're all gettable. They're all gettable player. Matoma's a fantastic shout. Can Matoma play on the right? I suppose you can rotate. I don't think he's been as good this season, but um, he is good. Put 90 to 100 million on the 90 to 100 on the table for Frankie De Jong. I'm a big fan of De Jong. Satori said, "Would love Chua Many. Ah, oh, Chua Many would be. He's he's not going to leave. He's going to be that next generation at Madrid." Uh, apologies, I haven't read these super chats out. Alberto Ray said, uh, "Ashley Cole is the Hall of Fame. Your thoughts? Best left back in Premier League history. Arsenal leg, Arsenal legend, and a Chelsea legend. That's that's the reality. What people think of him personally, that's fine, but." As a player, unquestionable. Best left back ever in the Prem. Uh, Dylan said, funny I was going to ask your thoughts on Gibbs White. Listen, Gibbs White, just for anybody that's just tuned in, I think he's a very talented footballer. And I do think he'll get a good move. I just don't think that's a priority signing for Arsenal. If Arsenal wanted an attacking midfielder, I, I want you to be looking at Musiala's and players of that level. I think the level needs to go up. Guna Carlos said, fans are a disgrace calling an invincible a snake. It's football, isn't it? He went to Chelsea and won a lot. I understand why fans turn on players when they go to rivals, but I think sometimes we've got to understand the bigger picture as well of why they left. Sir Festa says, big up Big C, just joining the show. He's actually called an Arsenal legend or Chelsea. Because my friends are Chelsea fans, just let me know. I, like I said, I think he's both. I don't, I don't believe you. You are only a legend at one football club. What he achieved at Arsenal was legendary. He came through the system, got in the first team, won the Prem, won the FA Cup, became an invincible, got in the England team, was the best left back in the Prem. Defensively, it was him and Maldini, probably Roberto Carlos. In world football, you know, he, and then he left. He went to Chelsea, won the Champions League, won the Prem, became a Chelsea legend. To me, he's a legend at both clubs. He's the best Arsenal left back I've ever seen. He's the best Chelsea left back I've ever seen. He's a legend of both clubs. Um, but it does hurt that he went there second. And, you know, I think he got a coaching role there as well. So his connection seems greater with Chelsea. And that's the thing that hurts. Um... I think he's a legend at both clubs. Listen, Cancelo for me. Let's have a look at the poll. Let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, listen, I think he's a good player. I probably wouldn't spend the money on him. 54% of you saying no. 46% of you saying yes. Um, so quite close there. I think we have to uh, understand Cancelo is a very good football player. He's got a big reputation. Can play right back, can play left back, can invert. He's two-footed. Got in the team of the year when he was at City. 
there is a very good footballer there. My concern is big wages, 30 in May. People saying that he's losing his pace at Barcelona. One thing you need in the Premier League at fullback is pace. And defensively, how good is he as well? Um, Sap said, can't be a legend if you leave to join local rivals. Great player for Arsenal, not a legend. I think he is. I think he tainted the legacy, 100%. Um, he tarnished the legacy, but... I still think he is an Arsenal legend. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Big up to everyone locked in. 1,700 of you. Big up the Twitch gang as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're close to... We're about 100 and something away from 75k. We'll hit that this week. Obviously, big week coming up. Manchester City at the weekend. I'll have a preview coming up. We're going to do loads of content around that game. And... Um, we will uh, obviously get the press conference reaction. I think the press conference on Thursday or Friday. Uh, it might be Thursday with it being an away game. Not a legend for me either. I get it. I get it. Um, it was Arsenal's fault the way they treated. Listen, Arsenal got to look at it like this. They verbally agree a contract. If they put that contract down on paper, he puts pen to paper, he signs a new deal. He never goes to Chelsea. You verbally offered him a contract. And you then changed it and offered him less. David Dean was pleading with the club, give him what you offered him. He didn't feel valued. Now, I, I don't like what he did, but it was in our hands. You know, it, sometimes in life, you've got to take accountability for your actions. You know, we've all been there. We've all messed up situations. You know, if they'd have given him what they agreed to give him, he would have put pen to paper. He would have stayed. Uh, yeah, listen, Gary, Kenny Sampson was a bit before my time. I've seen videos of him. I know a lot of the older fan base really rate him highly. Um, but obviously for me, Ashley Cole. Um, yeah, member stream. What did I say? I said we're going to do Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll let you know. It will probably... Hmm, probably Wednesday. England game's tomorrow, innit? Although I'm not doing a watch-along for that rubbish. Wenger fumbled the back. Well, it was the board. The board um, changed their mind. And that was typical of Arsenal, I'm afraid. Messing about with contracts. But hey, it is what it is. Um, let's move on. Let's move on again. We've got more transfer news to talk about. When I put this on stream, all I'm going to do is this. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, please. The end is near, people. The end is near. Oh, Although I've seen these stories before, so I wouldn't be surprised. Um... Fraser Fletcher putting out a story. Eddie and Ketia could leave Arsenal this summer and has already been informed he is free to find a new club. <laughs> yes, vamos! Come on. No disrespect, Eddie, you know, because you can't knock the hustle. If you can be at your level and you can make 100 racks a week, number 14 shirt, I respect you, bro. If I ever speak to Eddie or meet Eddie in the street, I will say, bro, you can't knock the hustle. I will never diss a young brother get in the bag. I respect it. You are a multi-millionaire at Arsenal Football Club. I don't know how, but I respect it. But trust me, people, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm not happy about this. This story needs to end. I've seen enough. I need that 14 shirt to get freed up. I don't want to see the phone call celebration from you. I don't mind Jesus doing it every now and then. But this needs to end. Apparently, Arsenal have told him he can leave. What has happened to Arteta, by the way, if this is true? He's disowned his stepson. It's like when you get with a girl, nice girl, but she's got a kid. You think, oh, it's not ideal, but, you know, she's, she's serious. So I'll take on the kid. I'll play the stepdad role. You know, now you broke up with her and, you know, you've blocked her and, you know, the stepdad rolls over. You're not interested. It wasn't your kid anyway. So now you've just moved on. Uh, and this is what he's done. Arteta's broke up with her and he don't want the kid no more. And he's disowned Eddie. Eddie, you're out, mate. Get out of the house. Pack your bags and get out. Get, get on the council list. They'll get you a flat. Uh, so the stepdad role is over, people. Um, team talk can reveal Wolves are now among the Premier League club sides chasing him, while Crystal Palace, Fulham and Brentford all hold an interest. I've said it before and I've said it again. 
Eddie, no disrespect to you, bro. You can go mid-table to relegation zone. You're good in that area, bro. You can do bit. You can go Palace. You'll score more than Mateta and 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 uh, Jordan Ayew. Them man get like two goals a season. Eddie can go Palace and grab eight Premier League goals and be good. They'll love you at Palace for the next seven years if you get eight goals a season. Wolves, you can go there, grab seven goals a season, nine goals a season. You're good, bro. You're good. Just stop doing all this. We don't want to see this no more. I don't want to see you wearing the 14 shirt. That 14 shirt is the whole, the holy grail at this football club. It was bad enough when Theo Walcott was wearing it, but at least Walcott was bagging goals left, right and centre. Yeah, like Mikel's turned around and said, yo, you're going to have to stop calling me dad. Now nah, I'm not actually your real dad. It all got, it all looks like it's got messy. But trust me, you're good, bro. Palace, stay in London. They'll love you. They say that you need me. Always be my... And it, uh, and I'm over. I don't know how that... You know the song they sing at Crystal Palace. Go to Palace and live your life. Just live your life. Hey. Instead he chasing that paper. You know what I mean? Go on, man. So yeah, 14. Let's let's deal with it. Yo, I don't know if anybody saw today. Jeremy, who used to play for Chelsea and Real Madrid. A story came out today. This guy's divorcing his wife after finding out his twins are not his. Apparently he's been suspicious for years. And uh, he had a DNA test and found out the twins weren't his. He's been raising them for years, thinking they were his. And, uh, yeah, so I reckon uh, Arteta's done the DNA test. He's found out Eddie ain't his, mate. So, uh, listen, get him out of here. Get him to Palace, South London. You're good there, bro. Eddie will be decent there. Eight, nine goals a season. He can live life. He can live life. But, yeah, man. Yeah, wickedness, man. I feel sorry for Jeremy, man. Get you got to make sure. Jeremy Kyle's settings, bro, I'm telling you, it was madness. I said, the DNA test result, the kids ain't yours. It's wild. It is wild. Oh, what do you do under them circumstances, man? You got a feel for Jeremy. He was at Borough as well, wasn't he? Good player, Cameroon international, midfielder. To be honest, if I was Eddie on 50k, I'd keep him as... If Eddie was on 50k, I'd keep him as third choice. Nah, bro. He's got to go. So it's more than the money. It's the 14 shirt. It's the 14. I always said, we can't end up in the burner bow bringing on Eddie. We're not far away. If they beat City and we beat Bayern, we're going to the burner bow. Jesus gets a knock. Havertz gets a knock. 70th minute, 14's coming on at the burner bow. I don't ever want to see that happen. Unless we're freeing up in the burner bow, of course. But listen, Eddie, question is, how much money can we get for him? To me, Wolves... Palace, Fulham, Brentford. You've got to be getting 25 million plus for him. I just don't trust Arsenal to get that. I'd take 20 with 5 million in add-ons. I mean, to be honest, I'd take a meal deal from Tesco. I'd rather have, you know, a, a fruit box and a, a sandwich. It's probably more useful, to be honest. But uh, no, nah, listen, 20 plus 5, 25 plus 5, you get me anywhere around there. I'm more than happy, people. I'm more than... You get me 20, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy. Um, you've got to... Uh, listen, as much as I don't rate Eddie, you've got to sell them the story. He's an England international. Even though he's only had one cap, I'm saying England international, 24 years of age. He'll be okay, maybe, at a mid-table club. He's coming from Arsenal. You've got to be, we should be getting 30 million for him. I've got to be honest in the current market how inflated it is, but it's Arsenal. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure we will. 20 plus an hour, I'm, I'm happy with that. But in the current market, you should be getting 30 million for him just because there aren't many good strikers out there. Um, so, Eddie, 40 million plus Tony. I mean, if Brentford stay up, that's a no brainer, isn't it? Tony's got a year left. You probably at the most you get 60, 70 million for him. I say, look, we'll give you 40 million quid and give you Eddie and Ketty. I'd be on that all day long. Uh, market is going down. FFP panic. Yeah, possibly. And the other thing, as I said, English players, their values will spike because you've got to have English players in your squad. I'd offer Eddie plus 20 million for Neto. Um, I 
that's a good point, actually, you know. I didn't actually watch that game. Did Eddie actually come on in that game for England? I thought he did. Do you know what? You're absolutely bang on. He didn't come on. He didn't come on. It says zero appearances for England. He didn't come on. Eddie, I'm, I'm going to give you the advice. I'm going to give you the advice. Big man advice. Big people advice now, Eddie, right? Two things you do. Let's let us let us save Eddie. Let's save Eddie. It says no appearances, but I thought he came on as well. Oh, he does. Apparently, he did play. He's got two things he should do if he didn't. You go play for Ghana, right? You go play for Ghana, Black Stars, AFCON. You get to a World Cup, play for Ghana. And you go and play for Crystal Palace. Or Wolves or Brentford. And then I'll have no problem. I'll have no problem whatsoever. I'll actually, I want him to score for Palace or Brentford. I'll be like, you know, I remember when we had Eddie, man. Good luck to him. I told you, I've put him in that box. He's in that box. Nicholas Bentner, Marouan Shamak, um, you know, uh, Lucas Perez. Uh, who else? You remember, there's a whole heap of PTSD when it comes to strikers. Eddie's in that category, people. You know, Shamak with the greasy here. Shamak actually scored in like seven um, Champions League games in a row, to be honest. But he's in there. He's in, yeah, Chuba Akpong, Yaya Sonogo. They're in there. They're in, I'm, I'm sorry. They're in there. There is a category and he goes, Francis Jeffers. We, we've been here, people. We've seen these strikers at Arsenal. He's in that category. It needs to end. When they leave, you like them. When Nicholas Bentner left, I thought he was a great guy. I said, yo, this Bentner, he's crazy, man. What a funny guy. When he played for Arsenal, I couldn't stand him. And that's how it is, people. When Eddie leaves, I'll be cool with him. I hope he bags goals for Palace. But at Arsenal, lock it off. Lucas Perez was cold. He wasn't that cold, bro, I tell you. He wasn't that cold. Um, he was the BTEC Vardy that we signed that summer. I tell you what, Eros. Nostalgia settings, right? Joel Campbell, for one season, was such a clutch player. He was so clutch. There was one season, I, I thought Joel Campbell was going to become a star at Arsenal. I think it was the gold Puma kit. I think it was the gold Puma kit, them times there. Joel Campbell, I genuinely thought was going to be a real talent at Arsenal. He, he, was, he was good, man, but I don't know what happened to him. Um, yeah, Ali Adier. We had beer strikers that were just... You were like, how the hell does this guy play for Arsenal? Rastaman said Campbell was low-key. A baller just didn't happen for him. I thought he was really good, man. Uh, Baptista. What an interesting loan that was, man. Bagged four, didn't he? And, and then just never really happened for him. Eddie got a full England cap. 17 minutes versus Australia. I think because he's played a friendly, though, I'm sure you're allowed to play a friendly... And still change nation. Didn't Diego Costa play one game for Brazil, then went to Spain? Zaha played one game for England, then went to Ivory Coast. So, Eddie, Ghana is the way forward for you, bro. Christopher Ray, the, the B-Tech um, George Weir cousin. Joel Campbell was decent. He definitely had talent. Podolski. Podolski, right, when we signed him, wow, that left foot. That, uh, that left foot was a sledgehammer. I thought Podolski was going to be a baller at Arsenal. It just didn't really happen for him, did it? Davo Suke, jeez. Remember him chipping Schmeichel in the Euros? What a player he was. Eduardo. Listen, Eduardo possibly would have been one of the best finishers we'd seen at Arsenal. One-on-one -on -one ability, Eduardo. Different level. The injury obviously finished him. His finishing was ice cold. You say Lucas Perez was cold. Pfft. Eduardo was cold before that injury. That guy was so calm in front of goal. Carlos Vela. Yeah, he, Carabao Cup merchant. Carabao Cup. You see Carlos Vela in the Carabao Cup. He'll be unbelievable. Chipping the goalkeeper. You put him in the Premier, get bullied. He's gone MLS and had a great career. Um, somebody just said in the chat, why is Gabriel Martinelli trending? I'm going to get into the story briefly. Um, some guy on Twitter, or X as we call it, um, put out a story this morning saying that Gabriel Martinelli has had an operation and would be out for a couple of months. Um, it's now been denied. 
So he's caused the whole heap of panic for no reason, which is why you have to, you know, be careful um, with stories that you believe online. So this morning, there was a meltdown online. People were going, oh my God, Martinelli's had an operation. He's going to, the story was saying he'd be out for two months. Um, but a number of big Arsenal accounts have now come out and said, listen, it's all made up. He's doing training at Arsenal. Apparently, it was a deep cut on the top of his foot. It's healed now. Stitches are out. And he should be available against City. And uh, for me, Martinelli has to start on Sunday against Manchester City. He's vital. I said it before. You realise how good he is when he's not in the team. You know anyway. But... We don't have a lot of pace when he's not in the team. You need him in the team. And, um, yeah, the panic panic should be over. So if you see Martinelli trending on Twitter, that's what it was about. A lot of people were panicking because um, there was a story that he'd had an operation that's now been denied. And the reason we're going to need Gabriel Martinelli so much... Now, anybody who watched the watch along the other day... I kind of apologise, but don't apologise at the si at the same time. There may have been some excitement from me when this guy on screen, Kyle Walker, limped off the pitch injured. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, it's Arsenal over anything. Um, I did say, though, don't get too excited because the injury didn't look very serious. Um... And I don't really buy into it. He tweeted after the game saying he hopes to be fine um, sooner rather than later. Gareth Southgate did say that he felt some sort of tightness in his hamstring. Was it just tightness and he's got off the pitch before anything's happened? Or has he actually caused some damage to the hamstring? Listen, I don't want anybody to be injured, but I hope he's injured for this weekend. Nothing major. Tight hamstring. Two or three weeks. Don't play against Arsenal. I'll take it. Because you put Rico Lewis at right back against Martinelli. It's game, set and match. Straight sets. Roger Federer. 6-1, 6-2, 6-6 love. Game over. Rico Lewis against Martinelli. Oh my days, we are cooking. Kyle Walker's just that cheat code fullback, isn't he? I don't know why he's so fast. How is he 33 still that quick? What I will say... Even if he does play, which I think he is, I hope he doesn't, but I think he will. If he's feeling a twinge in his hamstring, run his clock. Run it, run it, and run it. Martinelli, bro, keep running him. Run him until he pops that hamstring. Bap! Make him rip that hamstring. Run him! So, listen, I I'm hoping he's not playing, but if Martinelli is playing continue to run it and make that hamstring pop. That's what I'm on, people. I told you I'm club over country, people. You saw me in that England watch along. I, I'm, you know, I don't, I want him to win, but, you know, when Hendrick scored, I was hyped. Jogger Benito settings. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, it's one of them. It's like, they say, I don't want anyone to get injured, but I want him to be injured. You know what I mean, though, people? You're there with me. I don't wish injury on anyone, but if Kyle Walker's got to do the hammy, then do the hammy, people. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, that, that cut that um, Martinelli has received, it must have been a lot, lot worse than the club announced. Like, it must have really, like, stood at him um, on top of his foot. It must have been a deep cut if it's kept him out. For this long. Um, but he should be alright for the weekend. So no problem. Arsenal winning a penalty. England win it. Bro, I'm I'm club over country, bro. I, I, I'm, there's no hiding with that. Um, you know, listen. I, I would love... I'd love to... You know, obviously Jamaica at the weekend. Came third. Um, in the Nations League. Which was good. It's a shame they didn't actually get to the final. Um, and win it. But... In terms of England, listen, I want England to win the Euros, but um, I'm club over country, man. You you live and breathe your club team every day, every weekend. You're there. Club football, club football. National team is every so often. And I'm not being funny. When it comes to the England team, you know, it's here's what it is. You know, I don't want to say too much. You know anyway. I'm club over country all day long. Uh, do the hammy, Curtis Shaw 2024. It's a bit harsh, really, in it that I said that, but you know what I mean? Um, 
It is what it is. It is what it is. So we'll see. We'll see towards the weekend whether he comes back and he's available. I hope he's not. Uh, I didn't see. Did Tyler Adams score? I haven't seen the goals. Uh, congrats to America. I know they beat Mexico. Who are your top five strikers of all time? It's a great question. See, are you calling Messi and Ronaldo strikers? That's the that's the first question. I consider Cristiano Ronaldo was a left winger, Messi was a right winger, so I'm not going to include those two. I'm just going to go out and out, number nine, certified striker. You've got to put R9 Ronaldo is the best I've ever seen. Thierry Henry. Um, I suppose, I mean, it was before my time, but you've got to put Pele in there. But all right, well, no, do you know what? I'm not going to talk Pele. I'm only going to talk about the ones of, of our generation, right? I'm putting R9, Thierry Henry. I'm putting Romario in there. I'm going to be honest. It might be before, you know, before some people's time. He's one of the best strikers I've ever seen. Oh, there's so many, isn't there? Batty Stewart, I used to love him. Eto as well. To narrow it down, Adriano as well. Luis Suarez, Benzi. There's so many. There's so Van Basten, I never saw too much of him. Obviously saw the highlights. Definitely Thierry. Definitely R9. Definitely Romario. The other two... Boy, there's so many. Eto, Luis Suarez, he was unbelievable at Barcelona. Not Raul. I, I, listen, I respect Raul. I think they were better. Darren Huckabee. I what? Do you know? What? I met him a few times. He was at Forest. Rooney. Listen, th there's two. I, do you know what? I would struggle to get. Oh, George Whale. What a player. What a player he was, man. At um, AC. I would struggle to name the other two. I would genuinely struggle to name the other two. Shevchenko, Drogba. There's so many. There's so many. Uh, maybe I'll do a show on that. Um, good question, though. Who would you guys put as your top five? Ian Wright. I like Ian Wright. I don't know if he'd be in my top five ever. Um, Zlatan probably wouldn't be in my top five. Pippo Inzaghi, the six-yard merchant, but what a player. Romario was unbelievable. Anyway, let's move on. I'll, I'll be I'll be doing the I'll be doing nostalgia FC for the rest of the show. But big up, great interaction as always, people. Um, let's talk about this guy, Osman Diamande. For me, by the way, for me, this is a player that I think we should be signing this summer. Uh, a lot of people have been asking in the chat, you know, who would you go for this summer? This is a guy I would go for. This guy is beast mode. This guy is beast mode. If you've got Saliba, Gabriel, and him as your centre-backs, obviously Ben White can go there. Obviously, Tommy Asu can go there. And Timber, like, yo, the squad depth that you'd be talking about in defence. This is what... These are levels we need to get to this summer. Um... But yeah, Osman Diamandi being linked with Arsenal. Chelsea are interested in him as well. Arsenal have informed the agent of Osman Diamandi and directors at Sporting Lisbon their intention to sign the defender. Arsenal are willing to match Chelsea's 60 million euro offer, which could further increase if bonuses are included, rather than paying his 80 million release clause. So the story basically goes, he's got an 80 million euro release clause. Clubs are saying they're not going to pay that for him, but they're prepared to sell him for less than that if the if the deal gets to about 60 million euros plus add-ons. Now, the only concern for me is Chelsea apparently are willing to offer him first-team football. Their defence is not that good. Thiago Silva's nearly 40. Can we offer him first-team football? You've just got to sell it him as a project and say, listen, we want to have three or four top-quality centre-backs and you all battle for your position. But this guy can play. He played against Arsenal. He's an absolute beast. Ivory Coast international, 20 years of age. He's a tank, absolutely built like a tank. Six foot four and a proper player. Um... And just somebody that I think we should be bringing to the club. 
I've seen him a few times. Listen, do you know what? You probably go to sport in Lisbon and just drop him a big bag of money. You take him and Jokeres, take them both. Um, but yeah, very, very good player. Being linked with a lot of clubs now. Uh, yeah, we should raid them. It want Champions League. Exactly. And you've got to look at him and think, I'm not being funny, right? And I know Chelsea have got money. You know, you can't deny Chelsea have got money. But Chelsea are not even going to be in Europe next season. They're, they're not. I, I don't see any way they're going to win the FA Cup. Um, so why would you want to go to Chelsea? Mid-table, no European football. Their manager's uh, future's up in the air. The ownership's all over the place. You've got FFP investigating them. I, I would stay well away. From, man said shine bright like a diamond day. All right, stop. You you did that joke, so if you're angry, blame Trixie, but I couldn't help it. You would come to Arsenal. Go to Arsenal, Champions League, challenging for titles, young players, great style of football, manager on the up. It's a no-brainer, but money talks, people. You've heard the song, Dizzy Rascal, Dirty Cash, I want you, Dirty Cash, I need you more. They reckon Liverpool offered Kai Sado around 140 grand a week. Chelsea offered him 200 grand a week. Next minute, man's pulling out pictures in a Chelsea shirt when he was 16. You know what I mean? Money just swayed him. Now, though, he should have probably gone to Liverpool. But listen, this would be a great signing for Arsenal and would give us real options. 60 million euros, it's around 52 million pounds. You spend 52 million on him. That's your defender. You've then got your Timber, Tommy Asu, Diamande, Kivior, Saliba, Gabriel, Ben White. That's lots of options and squad depth. You then go and get your centre midfielder, Fafana, Barella, Frankie De Jong. Let's say you spend 60, 70 million on one of them. You're still only at 120 million. You get your striker for 80 million, 200 million. You get your right winger as cover, 30, 40 million, 240 million. Window done. Get a backup goalkeeper for 10 million. Window done. You're absolutely flying. But it's I know it's never as easy as that. Ser Curtis, serious question. Why are you so legendary? I'll take it. I'll take that question, Sammy. You know, you got to take the rough with the smooth on YouTube. So <laughs> big up to you, Sammy. Um, Sev says, uh, then don't need to sign another centre-back for 10 years. Listen, we'd be completely sorted there, to be honest. The guy's more aggressive than Saliba. He's also calm on the ball. Saliba needs that competition. Listen, as good as Saliba is, as good as Gabriel are, I want them to have competition. I say this all the time. Arsenal are a huge football club. I don't want any player in the Arsenal team to be guaranteed of his selection. Not one. I don't want Saka thinking he can put that Porto performance in and think there aren't consequences. I want Elise sitting on the bench or Neto or somebody say, bro, you're getting dropped you, you, or, or you're getting dragged after 60 minutes. That's not acceptable. Yeah, and also, like you said, occasionally you could go free at the back. You can go free at the back. John St. Ledger said, Big C, would you let your son play for Spurs if they gave you a ring? I wouldn't. Listen... Of course, my heart would say you reject them. Of course, you reject, you hang the phone up. But you do have to be realistic. I am going to be realistic. If, you know, if he got offered to go to Tottenham Academy, we, he would go. Uh, you know you know me, I speak the truth. I'm not going to turn around and go, oh, no, bun that. What? Imagine, I, imagine I stop him having a football career because of the club I support. You know, it's just not, it's not realistic for me to say no. But... If he had other options that were equally as good, of course, bond them. I ain't going there. But, you know, in reality, if it's just them, you know, it is what it is. Man said, Here, here's why I'm legendary, because I'm shameless. <laughs> we're shameless here, people, and we embrace it. We say what others are afraid to say, people. We say what... some. You go on some channels, they'll go... Oh, Eddie and Ketty, you know, he's come through the system and he did all right when Jesus was out injured and blah, blah, blah. No, nah, Eddie's not good enough. Sell him quick. Sell him quick. Get him to Wolves, Brentford Palace. Get rid. Get rid. Oh, well, Nenny, he trains well and he's good around the group. No, release him. Get rid of him. Not good enough. Uncomfortable conversations. That's what we're here for. Other channels are available. There's other channels out there. You know, you can run through the field with buttercups and butterflies and everything's rosy in the garden. But if you want that reality, people, you know, 
Then we're here, people. We're here every day, 2 p.m. Um, right, what we got? Final story before we get out of here. Dear Mandy, by the way, just get that deal done. Just get that deal done because I'm not being funny, but a lot of clubs should be trying to get him. I don't know why they're not. Every time I've seen him play, he looks like an absolute beast. Um, just quickly before we finish, I thought I'd refresh your memory because um, it seems like a while since we've even been in the Premier League. This international break is really dragging. Um, but let me just refresh your memory. When I look at this, it's crazy to look at. However, there's a lot of people having meltdowns online. And I'm, I'm going to show you why. And that's not going to show you why, is it? Because it's going crazy. Um, there's a new fixture thing that has been changed. And basically, Arsenal's fixture list looks pretty horrendous. Not in terms of the teams. It's not like we're scared of the teams. It's the lack of rest between fixtures and, you know, just the way it's all panned out for us now. And the lack of recovery time between games is a little bit daunting now. And a lot of people are starting to panic about it. I just say it is what it is. Man City have dealt with this season after season after season. If we're going to be champions, we're going to have to deal with it. Let me just show you how it looks. They've rearranged some fixtures now. This Sunday, 4.30, Man City. Next Wednesday, 7.30, Luton at home. So three days. Three days later, Brighton away at the Amex. Tough game. Three days later, Bayern Munich at home, Champions League. What a game. Then we get a little break, five days. Aston Villa at home. After Aston Villa, return leg to Bayern Munich. Three days after Bayern Munich, Wolves away. Three days after Wolves away, Chelsea at home, rearranged fixture. Four days after Chelsea at home, Tottenham away. Three days after that would be the Champions League semi-final against Madrid or City if we're in it. Then it would be Bournemouth at home. That's pretty easy. Then it would be the second leg of the Champions League. Then it would be Man United away. Then it would be Everton at home. And then we're champions. We've won the double. Simple as that. Champions League final, 1st of June. Meet you at Wembley. I know. Listen, it's. I'm not buying into the whole... These people online, oh, they've done it on purpose. They don't want us to win it. No, I'm not being funny, people. When you're in the latter stages... When you're in the Champions League and you're trying to win the prep, Man City have this every year. I never sat here and went, oh, look at that fixture list. Man City are playing every three days. Let me tell you this. As a player, even at the levels I played at, and anybody, if any of you guys ever played at any level, playing every three days was the best thing. When we had a midweek game, I absolutely loved it. It was the best thing ever as a footballer. Playing on a Saturday, waiting seven days to play the next game, I couldn't stand it. I knew psychologically I had to train all week. And I like training, but training can never match playing. Simple as that. If I'm Sacco and I'm Martinelli and I'm Rice, or what, we got a game on Wednesday? Big game, Champions League, Bayern Munich, 60,000. I'm hyped. That's what I want to do. I don't want to train on Tuesday and run around the training pitch. I want to play Bayern Munich. So as far as I'm concerned, and some people say, oh, you're very harsh on Arsenal. No, listen, I'm not here for fairy tales. I'm here for the reality. I've watched Man City multiple years play at the back end of the season every three days. They were doing it last year. Winning the Prem, winning the FA Cup, winning the Champions League. I've seen Liverpool in two or three competitions playing every three days. I want Arsenal to play every three days. I'm not going to cry online and go, oh, my days, the Premier League, they've stitched us. Playing every three days means you're successful. You're trying to win more than one trophy. Arsenal have to deal with it. We spent money. The squad is looking better. Nearly everybody's back from injury. Timber is the only injured player for Arsenal currently. Every other player is available. There's no excuse. Like you said, Simon, you, you hardly train. That's all you start doing. When you play games that much, you play on Saturday, day off Sunday, Monday is recovery, Tuesday, you're just going to go through some tactics, you play on Wednesday. 
day off Thursday, recovery and tactics on Thurs on Friday, you play on Saturday. Day off, it was the best thing ever as a player. Didn't have to train as much, you played more games. Your fitness is like that. Obviously, you've got to be careful with injuries, yeah. If you're winning a game 3-0, get Saka off, get Rice off, give them that little bit of rest. No excuse for Arsenal. Play every three days and let's see what you're made of. Let's embrace it. Um, people, listen, thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate your support as always. Um, I will be back tomorrow. We're going to get the content going throughout this week. I'll have a Man City preview later on in the week. Member stream, we'll try and get that done on Wednesday. And... Um, yeah, we'll be here all week. I'm going to get a couple of pre-recorded videos out this week as well um, as we look at, you know, what players we should be going for in the summer. But listen, big up to everyone tuned in. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're close to 75K. And I will see you at 2 p.m. tomorrow, people. Take care. Bless.